The Mobula 6 is one of the most popular drones in the entire FPV hobby. It's light, powerful, and relatively simple. But what if you're the pilot that wants a little bit more size or performance? Well, Hype Model has you covered with the Mobula 7 sporting a large propeller and carrying even more payload. Now at this point, you're probably thinking that the Mobula 7 is the perfect drone. And you're probably correct. Well, Happy Model was not content with this and went back to the drawing board teaming up with HD0 to present this, the Mobula 7 HD0 edition with Express LRS. So let's take a look at this drone and maybe now we can have our cake and eat it too. All right, so here's the box right here, Mobula 7 HD0. This thing is pretty cool, guys. I'm so psyched about this. And this will be one of my first whoops with HD, guys. Anyways, let's take a look at the box. Pretty simple, Mobula 7 HD0 with the uh, picture of the drone on here. Uh, on the side here, you have the options here. It says receiver option, and I do have the Express LRS 2.4 version on here, which is pretty cool. Besides that, nothing else on here. You just have the Happy Model and the HD0 logo on here, but two QR codes, you can go to their respective websites. All right, let's tear this thing open. All right, that was a good one. All right. Pretty straightforward, nothing fancy here. You have a manual here with some of the configurations. Usually I put this to the side, but honestly guys, this is a pretty cool layout. It's in color. And this will give you the proper instructions to get everything configured. And I said because both Express LRS and HD0 is still relatively new to the FPV world. So if you're new to Express LRS or HD0, especially HD0, then this will tell you how to configure your drone, how to get the visuals right, and how to update the firmware for this drone. So um, it's pretty nice you know, that they have this in here. You can also go to their website and get all the information about HD0 as well. To the side of here, we have a newbie drone bag with some extra propellers on here, a prop removal tool. Besides that, you have an extra canopy. Now, I was not expecting that. Two of them is better than none or one. So here's your drone right here. Yeah, that's nice. And on the bottom, you have some stickers. You have a Happy Model sticker and also an HD0 Divi Math Corporation, which is the collaboration between the two companies. So let's take a look at this drone. And it's pretty cool to have this transparent color here really really nice now obviously this is a uh, 75 millimeter drone here so it's a little bit bigger than the mobula 6 you can see a size comparison right here anyways let's take a closer look at this drone and yeah the first thing that jumps out at me is these propellers they're a lot larger they're also clear they're not colored usually you see black or gray propellers so these are also transparent it's a pretty sleek looking drone now connected to these propellers you have these motors these are the EX11 or 2s, 9,000 kV. So a little bit lower kV is compared to the Mobula 6, but that's gonna give you a lot more thrust, low end grunt. And obviously we have a bigger propeller in here, so that should be really fine. Besides that, these motors do have a 1.5 millimeter shaft, so it's a little bit bigger than your typical smaller whoop with the one millimeter uh, shaft in here. And hopefully that should be good for durability whenever or if you do crash. My eyes always go back to the canopy here, just transparent. And the first thing we see here is this HD0 camera. Obviously this is the Runcam Nano HD0 edition. Pretty cool, I haven't used this camera before, but I've heard good things about it. Now connecting to the MIPI cable is the VTX board, and that's the biggest story on this. Obviously Express LRS likes to steal the show. This is the HD0 board for whoops. Pretty cool, this thing is adjustable between 25 milliwatts and 200 milliwatts. So that should be more than adequate. Most of the 2S drones use 200 milliwatts and that's pretty decent. Besides that, you have the antenna that goes to the VTX. It's like a regular uh, dipole antenna and it has a UFL connector. So you can easily update this and I might do it in the near future. On my model here, it has a rubber band holding the antenna down and I don't, uh, let's see here. Wow, okay, so you can't move it. I think that's by way of design. I do feel though that if the antenna was going straight up, I'd get better reception. But that might be by design for durability issues, just to keep it down in case you do crash, it doesn't break the antenna or damage the antenna. Besides that on the side here, on the actual VTX board, you have your firmware update port. And I'm glad to announce that it's readily available. So when you do your firmware updates, you can just plug it in here. I do have the cable right here. And this usually comes with your VRX, or in my case, I do have the goggles and my goggles did come with this firmware update. And that's how you're gonna update the firmware on this is through your VRX or your goggles. All right, right below the VTX is your flight controller. And this is typical of Happy Model with their all-in-one. 
So it is an all-in-one board here. It has the flight controller ESCs and also the receiver. In this case, it has the integrated Express LRS receiver with Express LRS 2.0, which is really good because right now we are currently on the 2.x or 2. whatever version. So in my case, I wouldn't really have to update this if I didn't want to. Just flash this with the proper phrase or passphrase, and this thing should automatically bind to your TX or your module on your radio. This drone just has almost the best of everything. I have a drone with Crossfire and DJI. That's pretty cool as well. But to have something this small with Express LRS, the range, the latency, and then also HD feed as well in this package, it is, yeah, I'm, I'm some sight, guys. Underneath is pretty straightforward as well. And you have this battery bay right here and it is a little bit larger than normal. Now this is a 2S drone. Well, 2S to 3S, they do recommend 2S, but it can be ran on 3S as well. And they recommend a 450 milliamp hour battery. I have a few of those. So I'll be using some sizes smaller than that and some also large to see how this thing behaves, the flight time and the actual performance. Under here, you also have a, wow, I was gonna say micro USB, but it is a USB-C port. So you can now update this via USB-C on your beta flight or on your computer. Besides that, you have the power source, this cable right here, and this has an XD30 connection, which is pretty cool. Um, some other drones have two uh, PH 2.0 connectors. In this case, uh, we do think that the XT30, well, we do know that the XT30 is superior. So the next thing to do before we fly is update the firmware on both the VTX and also your flight controller. And that's because you have an SPI receiver here with the Express LRS built into it. You have to flash it so it can communicate with your radio. And then also you need to update the firmware on your VTX because it has to be the same firmware as your VRX or your goggles. Now today I'll be using the Scout HD. I did a review on this recently, so I'll leave that linked above and below in case you do want to go with this. All right, this drone looks pretty good and looks like it's ready for flight. Before we do that, we need to update the firmware on both the VTX and the actual flight controller. Now, it's as easy as going to the HD0 website, go into support and then downloads, download the right or the newest firmware for both your goggles and your VTX. Now, once you download that, it's gonna be a zip file. You just unzip it and you'll see all the contents in your zip file. Now, that's all the contents for all the different VRXs and all the VTXs as well. So it's just one firmware update. You choose your specific model and then you just move the contents to the root folder of your SD card. And this one here is the whoop board for the HD0. And all to do is just put the SD card into my VRX. My VRX is built into my goggles, so I'll just put it in here. And then you have to use your update cable. So as I said before, this came with my VRX. And there's a firmware update port right here. Pretty straightforward. It goes in right there. And I do the same thing for the VTX. Plug it into this port. And as I said before, when I unbox this, it's pretty cool that they have the port readily available. All right, so we're looking pretty good here, guys. We have our VTX connected to our VRX. We have our SD card and our VRX with the updated firmware. Now, you don't have to power up the drone for this. Once you power up your goggles or your VRX, it is going to send the power to the actual module here. So I'm just going to power this up. And it says right HD zero TX, which makes sense. And it's going pretty fast guys. And I can see the board lit on the VTX, right done. Firmware update successfully, repower v VRX now. So do this, do I put it back in here? Let's see if what happens there. All right, so the update is done. I'm gonna unplug that. And that was pretty quick and easy. Firmware update is done for the VRX VTX. I'm content with that. What I'm gonna go, do is go to the computer and then I'm gonna show you how to, I'm using, well, we're all using Express LRS on here, but because this is a SPI receiver, it's built into there, we can't use the Express LRS configurator to get this bound to my radio. So we have to go into the CLI command and generate the command for that. So I have my, 
find or passphrase in here. So let's go to the computer and get that going. All right, guys, we have the computer. I have my drone here, my Mobile 7. I have a fan here to keep it warm just in case these things do overheat. So I have a fan here to protect the equipment. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is try to get your CLI command. And we're gonna do that by going to the expresslrs.org website. And here we are, expresslrs.org. And you can just type in the search engine right here, SPI, and it's gonna give you the SPI page right here. Now what you wanna do here is if you have a binding phrase for your module in your radio, which I do have, you just type in the phrase right here and that will generate a UID byte, which is this right here. And that changes specifically based upon the text that you have here or your binding phrase. At the bottom here, you just copy and paste this and put this into your CLI for beta flight. So as you can see, I have a phrase here that says test. And as I move the characters here, you can see these numbers change. I'm offline right now, I was online, I'm offline right now, and it still generates the binding phrase or the UID byte here. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna put my phrase in here, and then I'm gonna copy and paste it into the CLI for beta flight. All right, so once I have that, I just go to beta flight. I'm gonna plug my drone in, USB-C cable, pretty cool, pretty cool. I can just connect right here. And it's showing that I have an older configuration, which is not true. This is the newest release right here, 10.7.2. Um, but this drone is so new, it's using uh, the firmware of 4.3. Most drones are using 4.2. The most updated release is 10.7. Now you can go for a 10.8. That's gonna be a release candidate. And that should be out pretty soon, like in the next couple of days actually, but it technically isn't out right now. That might cause some errors. I don't know yet, we'll see, but they don't recommend you use a older configurator with a newer firmware, but this doesn't happen too often, guys. So I'll just close that. I'm not making any dramatic changes in this drone anyways. I'm just changing the binding phrase. Now, there's a couple of ways to bind this, and I can do it the simple way. If I go to my receiver right here, and then just hit bind receiver, it's gonna put the receiver into bind phase. But I also wanna have this drone compatible with all my radios, not just one radio. So I do wanna put my binding phrase instead. So we're just gonna go to the CLI here. So before I do anything here, you do wanna save your diff file in case anything does go wrong in here. You have a backup of the factory files and the configuration of this one. I already did that, it's saved on my computer. So if anything were to go wrong, I could reflash this flight controller. So I just go here and then just paste what I copied from online. And it also had the save already in here. So I could just hit enter, boom, and it did it. So that was pretty straightforward. So now my Express LRS module has my binding phrase and I can just power this drone up and technically be good. Besides that, I just wanna change my OSD elements. That's all good. Let's go to our modes, make sure these are all good. Disconnect. Let's go to the table and see if it binds to my radio. Let's see if we can arm it. Okay, so we have both of our radios here and we're gonna see if it can bind to both of our radios. That's the whole point of Express LRS and using the passphrase. Let's put a battery here. I'm using the 525 milliamp hour. Let's plug this puppy in and see how it goes. All right. All right, we have image and we have telemetry, so we're good. Let's see if we can arm this bad boy. Um. It works and it's quiet. It is. There is some wind in here. Pretty cool. Woo! All right. It's beeping because we lost connection. Let's try the other radio here. Let's see if that works. I'm gonna power this on. All right, we have telemetry. Looks good as well. Let's try it with this one now. It arms. There you go. There it is. Whoa. <laughs> All right, that was fun. Let's unplug this thing. All right, so Express LOS works on both of my radios. Only one thing to do now is go for a flight. So let's take this for a flight. I'm probably gonna fly it indoors first 
and then go outside and see how it performs outside. So let's do it.